are at Newton Farm School, where we'll be following three teachers using techniques they learnt in a drama workshop. Year two teacher, Lara Miller, uses focus and visualisation to develop ideas for her history lesson. to do a capital letter A. Off you go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Can't believe Ashton. Year four teacher, Ian Sutherland, favours bodyscapes and frozen scenes to explore Tudor England. As we can see, this looks, is this the sun? Right here, because it's nice and high in the sky, it's a lot higher than all the other plants, that's very obvious. And Jill Bland, Year 6 teacher, uses thought tracking and still frames for a literacy class on The Hobbit. Change places if you particularly like Coronation Street. At the beginning of her lesson, Lara Miller agrees the rules of the three C's with her pupils. Concentration, cooperation and communication. These rules all begin with the letter C. And there are three words and they help us have a really enjoyable time in a drama lesson. Concentration. Why is it important to concentrate in drama? If we don't concentrate, um, we won't know what we're doing. Good girl. And we have to listen. Good girl. And uh, concentration makes us think more. Excellent answer. Well done. Can anyone think of another word? Cooperate. Do you know what cooperate means? It means like you're working together in the group. Good girl. Excellent. Right, our last one. Communication. Good girl. Talking and listening to each other. Communicating with each other. Excellent. Okay, the first game, the warm-up game we're going to play, it involves a lot of concentration. When I say go, in 20 seconds you are going to get into groups of people that have the same colour socks as you. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Stop. Okay, let's see what categories we've got. What are you? Black. What are you? White. What are you? Grey. Grey. What are you? What colour have you got? You've got blue. So he's in a group on his own. And you've got? Red. Red. And you've got? None. You did really well, these three, because they knew they had to go in a group on their own because they didn't match anyone else. Pictures of a medieval castle kitchen provide a focus for the children to discuss and develop their ideas. I'm going to give you about four minutes to talk about, very carefully in your groups, what you see happening in the picture. I think that um, this, uh, this uh, Maureen is um, trying to make some porridge. So then she gives us a uh, food. Yeah, she puts it in the food. She's yeah. rolling it around with this cooking spoon. Okay, this group. What have we found out that's going on in this picture? Oh. It's if that was coming to life, um, it will be um, like zoom because it's like. What is it? What's it the picture? What's he doing? He's pulling um, a chain. Uh, it's like, it's making something, it's making something from inside there. It's making something, so that's his job. Do you think he likes his job? No. Do you think it's fun? Yeah. Do you be pulling the chain all day? No. No. Now, we should imagine now that this magic carpet has lifted up out of the hall. You're sitting on it, and you're rising up through the roof, right into the clouds. And you're up, right above the clouds now. And this magic carpet suddenly starts to fly really fast through the sky. It's going over the clouds, over the trees. You've just seen your house below and you're waving at it. And you feel the carpet suddenly slowly going down. And suddenly you're landing right inside a kitchen of a castle. Lara uses thought tracking to enable the children to express some of what they see and hear in the castle's kitchen. Um, cooking. I can see really, really tired cookers all working. In her soundscapes, Lara gets the children to make the sounds they might hear in the castle kitchen. Ready to make your sounds, sitting up nicely, so you see already. Now, at 
the end of a drama session, what we have to do is we have to evaluate what we've done. So we have to think about a couple of questions, and these are very important questions. The first question I'm going to ask you is, what do you think you've learnt from this drama session? When you do your drama, you, ha you think and you can share your, re your ideas, but instead of keeping them to yourself, you can um, give them out to others, and so others get good ideas and they give you back ideas. Excellent. I learned how to like, make sound with like, your, your body. Using bodyscapes and freeze frames, Ian Sutherland encourages the children to imagine Tudor life in England. Now remember, a bodyscape is actually a frozen scene. You, you don't actually move in it at all. What you need to create for me is a burning fire. Now, remember it's a bodyscape, we're frozen, so we can't move. But how could you use the movements, the positioning of your body to create that fire? Off you go. Three people in the middle and they're like, like, yeah. Show me like that. What do you mean? Some people, some people could be a stick. You could stand up and like that. So we've got our, lo we've got our logs around our fire here, have we? All sort of circ well, they're all sort of circling, circling the fire, are they? And this is our fire here in the middle, with the, with the flames sort of licking up, aren't they? I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Put your hands up if you think you can tell me why or how you know that these three people in the middle are the fire. They made um, their bodies look like a fire. Can you see the difference between our three flames? They're all different heights. That's something called using levels. Okay? We're not all standing at the same height and doing the same thing. We've got one part of the fire on the far side that's, a, that's not as strong and powerful and growing, but in the middle here we've got a really strong part that's really high and flickering, and then we've got our bits on the outside. Ian also gives the children photos to help them focus on life in Tudor, England. On our street, our, our roads are smooth. Yeah. And look at that beautiful bundle. They could have made it from a tree. Outside. Yeah. All right, guys. Back out into the circle, please. What you need to go away and do now is just communicate with your group, which you did so well with your bodyscapes. A frozen scene, just one frozen scene, one frozen scene in your... Um, of Tudor daily life. You're digging away and then I come along and say, give me your land. And then sit around like this and then you're like, you're getting out your money. So how many people are involved in this scene? Just make sure that you've got, everyone's been allocated um, something frozen to do, whether they be, whether they are a, a, a bush of crops that's been cut, in, cut down, they are gardening, whether they are the stocks, things like that. Um, there could be two people begging for money. There could be some two people, that's a good idea. Some people need to stop, some people need to garden, or something. Two people could be the beggars. Stop. Now, the really interesting thing about this thing that strikes me straight away is that we've got different levels. We've got a very low level here, we've got a very high level here, so it makes it kind of exciting. I like doing frozen scenes in a group. Just, you know, being with the people, because that we can use everyone's ideas, not just yours, because everyone has really good ideas. We're going to be learning about The Hobbit. And we're going to do it in various new ways. Jill Bland uses thought tracking to help children express how they're feeling in their frozen scenes. They then select scenes from The Hobbit to show key elements of the story. What do you think a frozen scene is? It's basically if we were doing The Hobbit, then we'd choose a scene from The Hobbit and act still so you can see what's, what's been going on and happening. Work together to make a still picture showing your favourite sport. Action! What are you thinking? Out loud. Well, I'm thinking of making a six runner for my team. Now, in a minute, I'm going to go alive, and you're going to give me six seconds of action. Alive. Five, four, three, two, and freeze. That is fantastic. Can everyone give him a big clap? <laughs> going to ask this person what your thoughts going to be in this group. That we're trying to impress all our fans and we're trying our best and we're working as a team. And this one here, can we... We're trying to break the world record of break dancing. And I can believe them because they're determined, they want to put that into their drama. 
By the end of the lesson, we're going to have three scenes, three frozen pictures to show us three scenes from The Hobbit. He has to catch up with Yeah, he needs to out his pocket hanky, yeah. pocket tissue, a watch, and he tries to take something from the Charles Purse, but Charles Purse is taught. Oh, so that's where the trolls are. Oh, they just like get the trolls in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to be a troll. I want to be a troll. Hey, the Hobbit is in fright. 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 No, first of all. Starting with your first frozen picture. He's late. He wants to go on this adventure. But I'm going to ask you what's happening. I'm telling them which, the way to the forest. Then. On the adventure. Bilbo is trying, in, trying to catch up with us. Um, I'm the leader of the dwarfs. I'm just ahead of everybody. Um, I'm trying. Um, I'm just trying to uh, smash down the stinging nettles and stuff, so the people behind me can get through. Right, can we go on to the next second scene? This group, please. And action. Freeze. Right, final scene. And freeze. What's happening here? Because we caught Bilbo trying to pick William's pocket, so we're gonna we're fighting over how we're gonna um, um, cook him or roast him or sit on him, and make him jelly. <laughs> I just want to ask a couple of questions. What did you actually like about that scene, that final scene? Can you go back into that final scene again? It was really good how she was doing the movements of how the fire would do. And how it would move. Very real, didn't she? Yeah. They were still thinking how, if they had to, like, make movement, they were still thinking how they'd move and really keeping it real. Okay, what's going to, you're going to take away from this drama lesson, which is going to help you in the future to learn? You have to, like, be moving and talking to make something really good because if you're still and you're concentrating on that specific still thing, it's just as good as when you're moving. It, it might even be better sometimes because you're concentrating more on one specific thing instead of doing a whole big thing. The lesson, I thought, went really well. The children were very much involved. Uh, they loved all the, the um, warm-up activities. They loved crossing the circle and they loved getting into their groups. I think that the important thing about, about drama is that um, it's so easily integrated into lots of different curriculum areas. If you don't have enough time for it as a single subject by itself, you can um, quite easily put it into your topic. From the, the lesson this morning, I think they got a lot out of the history and they really got inside the pictures like we did and they could think about the feelings of the people, what the sounds, the smells, what they could see, what they could hear. So it's, it's actually heightening their senses.